Hello YouTube, this is Morgan, Airspeed Prime here, my next Avatar in Review video. This one's going to be episode 3 for Avatar The Last Airbender, book 3, Fire. So yeah, this is going to be the last, uh, I suppose, individual book review in this series for Avatar. Next, next week is going to be the whole series, Avatar The Last Airbender as a whole, and make some general points about the whole season, and then we move on to Korra. But uh, yeah, for now, this video, we're focusing on Book 3, Fire, here's the uh, DVD set, cover, and back, um, but yeah, I th this is my favourite book, you, you guys know that, if you've seen the previous two videos, I basically already said that, um, of the three books of Avatar, uh, number three is Book 1, Water, number two is Book 2, Earth, so of course, Book 3, Fire is my top book. Um, now, obviously, the reason is why. Why is this my favorite? This is my favorite because I love the format of this book. I love that it starts off with a few um, quieter, less action-packed episodes that play an interesting role in the kind of theme of the season, and then it just hits a point at the at the invasion where things just get crazy. There's action everywhere, and then from there, it has the best run of the series overall just in terms of once the invasion starts until the end of the show this is an amazing run of just excellent episodes um, and so I really appreciate that and that they get a lot of the kind of final character moments out of the way kind of final, kind of final character development uh, moments out of the way in the, in the first half of the season and then focus on action resolving a lot of the stuff and then doing the final big moments uh, towards the end of the season and I just really like that format and the interesting thing is that this book actually has the same format as Korra book 2 spirits in terms of that has a slower start you hit beginnings and then things get really kind of dramatic towards the end of the season so I, I just kind of really like that format of a book so um works out really well now, of course, um, the, it's the book that takes place after Book 2 Earth, and after such a crazy uh, ending, you're really wondering where they're going to start, and so, yes, it is a little bit of a shock that they actually do start off the season with a bunch of episodes where our heroes are not directly fighting back, and that they do decide to kind of travel the Fire Nation on their own until the invasion actually comes around, and it's going to be a much shorter, smaller invasion force. Um, but it works, because you do have the fact that they kind of need to need a chance to, I suppose, heal after what's happened. They need a chance to just uh, travel around, undercover, not encounter people for a while. And what those early episodes actually do for the series is they allow you for the first time, really, to understand that the enemy in the show is not the Fire Nation overall. The enemy is Ozai. Ozai and the bad people that he has in charge of that military, that country, that's the enemy. The You re you realize very quickly that the Fire Nation treat a lot of their kind of smaller villages in the exact same way as they treat all of the villages from the other nations, in that they don't care about their own people really as well. They're just focused on capturing every uh, every location basically. And so that's important for everyone to realize. Because it plays into a lot of the themes, I suppose, with Katara and stuff like that. She was her realizing that, um, her and Sokka, I suppose, but realizing that the the enemy is not just a Fire Nation because of what they did. It's it's specific people in the Fire Nation, and you shouldn't take it all out on a whole nation because of that. Um, and it, it's just very important that the show shows that to you, because the our, our heroes winning the war actually helps the Fire Nation just as much as it helps the other nations in that the innocent people of the Fire Nation, who we learn are told wrong history uh, in the schools, um, basically to make it seem as if the Fire Nation are the heroes and the rest of the world are the villains. You find that out in the, he in the headband episode when Anne goes to school. So there's some very important stuff that actually happens here in terms of, I suppose, explaining how this nation, who's run by these evil people, how nothing has happened within the nation to realize that the people go like, hey, our, what we're doing is wrong here, isn't it? Why are we actually invading these other um, nations? And you get the reason for that here, in that the, the wars have been going on for a hundred years, so you've had a couple of generations of people go through school, become the kind of uh, adult, old, older people in the nation, and so they grow up thinking that this war is good, that the Fire Nation are the good side in this war, and what they're doing will help the world. 
when in fact they've been lied to their whole lives by the changing of history from the Fire Nation. And that's super interesting, that kind of subtle learning about the Fire Nation plot that you get uh, in the first half of the book. And then while this is also happening, you get Zuko kind of, um, kind of adapting to being back in the Fire Nation. And you get to see him interact with Ozai a bit more, uh, Azula, and deal with what the fact that he betrayed Iroh. So there's a lot of interesting stuff going on with Zuko because technically what Zuko has is everything he's always wanted. He is basically at the, r the right hand si side of his father. He's right there, he's back being the prince. But he realizes pretty quickly that he's not himself. To be the person Ozai wants, he can't be the person that he actually is. And so, despite all this, some of the good stuff that actually comes about him actually being in the Fire Nation, he can't bring himself to be here. And he's f so passionate about that that he's willing to kind of um, risk his relationship with Mei, which is actually which actually works really well in those early episodes in the Fire Nation. She's kind of happy to just be there with him, and he kind of then goes off. He, he decides basically at this point that he's on the wrong side, that he has to find, he knows what his destiny is now, and that's not to do what his father told him to do, that is to join the Avatar to take down his father and basically restore the Fire Nation to what it's meant to be. And that's just, it just works really well in those early episodes, like, um, you have episodes like The Beach, which I think is a really important episode, because I know, I know it's one of those episodes that people, some people really like, some people don't like at all. I really like the episode because I think it's really important for all of those characters and their development. Because it, it really is one of the only episodes where you get Azula development, May development, and Ty Lee development. And so it ends up being insanely important, not to mention Zuko has a really important moment here when he kind of at the end, you know, reveals that he's angry at himself for making these decisions, being unable to know what's right and wrong anymore and stuff like that. And then Azula in that episode is really important because it's the one and only time you really see her kind of... You really see how lacking she is in certain skills. That the way she was raised meant that she didn't learn these normal things. She doesn't have a clue how to interact around, you know, like boys in terms of like not threatening them and stuff like that. She doesn't have any idea how to, you know, just enjoy interacting with someone really, I suppose is the idea here. And that's fascinating for her character in that, in that episode, you don't, she, she's the villain, like she's the main villain. She killed Aang like just a couple of episodes ago at, at the point where you see this episode. But in this episode, you kind of see some of those little vul vulnerabilities that she has come out. You see, um, you feel a little bit sorry for her as it goes on and that you really see that she's been used by Ozai. The way he raised her has not really, has helped her in some ways, hasn't helped her in others. And the fact that she actually has to rely on Tai Lee for advice in this situation is actually amazing because it's something like that she realizes that this is something I'm not good at. I can't do like flirt with boy. You tell me what to do. And that's in like that that's a big moment. And like Tai Lee is shocked that Azula is asking her for advice. Um and it ends up working, but she kinda of ruins it in the end when she could kind of returns to her old kind of uh, maniacal ways, I suppose, but fascinating episode, you know, finding out about Ty Lee's, um, all of her sisters who look identical to her and her quest to become unique. Uh, it, it's such an interesting story, actually, Ty Lee's one, in that, you know, ultimately, like, she has a very interesting arc in this book, but just by herself, in just revealing why she went to the circus to get away from her family to become unique, um, betraying Azula, uh, siding more with, you know, May, who is her actual friend, rather than Azula, who's kind of been like her fear friend through fear, and then at the end, joining the Kyoshi Warriors, which is such a clever thing to do for her character, in that this is a group of warriors where the clothing makeup that they wear makes them all look the exact same, but she's happy around them 
because she's kind of become confident in herself enough to not have to have the need to kind of look different to everyone because she knows that she is different and stuff like that. It's, it's really actually a nice uh, arc for her. And then May's arc is more about her kind of realizing how much Zuko means to her, that, that she would actually betray Azula, who she's a bit afraid of, because her love for Zuko is bigger than that. And there's some nice stuff with that early on as well. But um, yeah, g focusing still on these earlier episodes, um, there's some really great episodes here. I really think there is. Um, like, The Awakening um, is a solid opening episode because it has so many important moments. Like, it's uh, the reunion of Katara and Hakoda. And you see, it's not just a happy reunion because she's actually angry at her father for not coming back sooner. And it's so such a real scene when he just kind of hugs her and all of the emotion just comes out from her. It's such a strong scene, it's, it's really well done, and then how she's kind of taking out her anger on her father for both what he did and what Aang has just done in running off, and then the scene with Aang later on when he meets uh, Roku and Yue and they kind of inspire him, really strong. Um, the headband, as I said, important episode, like it, it, it seems to be kind of one of those kind of like the fortune teller-like episodes, but it has a more serious plot on the side in the background. That being obviously the um, learning about the way the Fire Nation schools work and the way they kind of uh, raise the kids not to not to have any kind of creativity, flair, express, express emotion and stuff like that through dance and stuff like that, to teaching them the wrong history and stuff like that. And just showing the change that someone like Aang who is so, such a kind of free spirit character can actually have on these people and the idea I suppose maybe by the end of the episode was that he eventually inspired these people to change things that the, the, these kids who would go, go to, on to become the next kind of generation kind of change things because of Aang's uh, uh, what he did to, uh, during this episode and then there's the whole side plot of like set up for Katang with the dance party and Aang being confident around Katara for the first time ever so that's really strong too. Painted Lady. I know it's an episode a lot of people dislike. They rate it very lowly. But um, I feel almost the complete opposite. Like this episode. I don't I don't think it quite makes my top 10. But it's probably like 11 or 12 on my list of like top 61 episodes of Avatar. Like it, I rate this episode very highly. I think it's one of Katara's best kind of episodes. That focuses on her. Um it's just really strong like the, the again it's the episode that shows you that the fire nation are actually adversely affecting their own nation their own towns the, the town that they go to in this episode uh, is a fire nation town and they're they're all nice people the problem is just the military are are hurting them and stuff like that the it, it's an episode that has this kind of side plot of pollution and the fire nation are also uh, badly affecting the environment with how industrial they are and stuff like that and then there's the spirit stuff that comes into it and I think it is one of the better spirit episodes as well just because you know the spirit actually isn't involved for the whole episode it's just Katara going undercover to make the to kind of give the people hope and towards the end of the episode this painted lady actually appears to Katara and kind of thanks her for doing this and it's important because the painted lady we, we've later learned through kind of core stuff is basically she was a human she went into the spirit world and over time became a spirit so this, the painted lady is actually a pretty important spirit in the grand scheme of things so it was great to see uh, that and not to mention Katara's like probably one of my favorite lines from all of Avatar just Katara saying to Sokka I will never ever turn my back on people who need me and just the way that Sokka goes from being the schedule guy to hearing this and just being like okay and joining and accepting what his sister wants because I suppose it's important because the reason that Team Avatar have any support going into the invasion is because they've helped people along the way that they haven't just been focused on their mission and they didn't just beeline it to uh, the Northern Water Tribe and stuff like that they encounter people along the way they became friends with them friends enough to where these people would join in in the invasion and so this is kind of the point that Katara is making here that that's it's not directly said in the episode but that's the idea that you know us helping people 
is kind of just as important as us winning at the end. Uh, so I really like The Painted Lady. I think it's a really good episode. Um, then uh, you obviously go into episodes like, uh, as I said, the, the beach and stuff like that. Um, Avatar and the Fire Lord, actually, the episode after the beach, that one is definitely worth talking about. That's a really good episode. Almost one that you forget kind of needs to happen. Because we know the war happened, like it's explained in the intro to like the first episode and every episode, but we don't know the specifics behind it. Why wasn't Roku able to like s stop the war from happening? Why is Odon Aang to do this? And so it's actually really interesting that you only get this important backstory at this point in time, but it's a really strong episode. Avatar always does flashbacks exceptionally well. This episode no different, it's just really well done. Um, learning about Roku as he grew up, how he grew, uh, learned the elements. Uh, I suppose it's the first time we really see an avatar learning the elements the traditional way, traveling from one place to another, having a different master, meeting the different people, his own little experiences with romance, and his friendship with Sozin, and how that links perfectly into basically the next generation of this friendship of an avatar and a fire lord. That's what the episode is about. Uh, that being that. At the, at the same, Z Zuko and Aang are at the same time hearing the same story from a different point of view, and how Roku and Sozin's friendship couldn't avert war, but how Zuko and Aang's friendship could potentially do that if they kind of come together. And it ends up being a super important episode for Zuko, and that I think this very heavily um, convinces him to join up with Aang and stuff like that. But just super emotional towards the end of the episode, obviously with the death of Roku and what Sozin actually did and how this directly led to the Air Nomad genocide and stuff like that. It's it's really just, a, it's a really great episode. Um, you know, the, the Chase is probably not my favorite episode, but it's it's still a fun episode. Um, um, and yeah, the Puppet Master as well, you know, another Katara-focused episode, Introduction of Bloodbending, it's a more kind of creepy, Halloween-esque episode, but it's still good because you get to see, again, it's the kind of history aspect that you get to it, that um, this woman who you think is Fire Nation the whole time, you eventually find out she's Water Tribe, she's from the Southern Water Tribe. You get a little bit of backstory in that episode where you find out that when the Fire Nation attacked the Southern Water Tribe, she was like the last person there defending it. And she was taken, she was kind of kept in such a bad way in prison that she eventually just grew to hate the Fire Nation. And again, important episode thematically in the season because Hama, rather than again, rebelling, fighting against the people she should be fighting against, the Fire Nation military, the leaders, decided that she would go against everyone in the Fire Nation. And that is the exact wrong thing. That's the whole thing that Team Avatar learn over the course of this early part of the book. Not to do that. And here they have an enemy who's actually doing that. And they help the people, free them, and they've done something good for the Fire Nation again. Very important. Um, the one negative, I think, with Book 3 is just that it happens to contain, in my opinion, the worst episode of Avatar The Last Airbender, that being Nightmares and Daydreams. It's not awful. I'll say that straight away. My problem with it is that it's the only episode of Avatar I honestly feel is like filler, uh, in terms of the Ang section of the story. It's he, they, the the invasion is like the day before or something, the day afterwards, and Ang is struggling to sleep. And that whole part of the episode is literally just like ten, twelve minutes of Katara, Ang, Sokka doing these weird things to help Ang sleep. Combined with these weird dreams that Aang has about math tests, there's lots of anime references in there, and I just don't think it's not, it was not needed. Like, the Zuko part of the episode is excellent with, with, with what he's going through at that point in time, because it's the episode just before um, the invasion, which is where he actually confronts Ozai, so this is kind of the episode where he makes his decision. While Zuko's doing this really important thing, Aang just can't sleep. And especially with the way it's resolved and just like, the, the his teammates just go, we believe in you, Ang, and he can sleep. It was just like, you just, you literally filled up time in an episode by having these little silly things happen. There's no real importance there. It doesn't have the same humor as like a Ember Island Players with the references, just because 
really? Like, at this point in time? Like, the episode just before this, you're doing this? But, anyway. Uh, yeah, then we get into the second half of the season. And the second half of the season is just amazing. The invasion... The invasion's interesting because the, the, you go into it, like, it's you know there's 21 episodes in the season. And you go into episode 10 and 11 with this big invasion that you thought was going to be the end of the season. And just wondering, what's going to happen here? Like, are they actually going to do it? And it's just really great to see, like, Sokka leading. You see Hakoda get hurt. Sokka forced to lead the whole invasion. You see that uh, Ozai has left. Azula's there. Um, meanwhile, Zuko's confronting Ozai in an amazing moment. And he kind of reveals that his ideals are so close to Iroh's more than Ozai. And... The just awesome moment where Ozai tries to kill Zuko by lightning bending at him and then Zuko redirects it using Iroh's technique to kind of uh, get away from his father and join, go off and join Team Avatar. And then it's just another kind of, again, tragic moment in the episode where just the invasion fails and all the adults are captured and all the kids have to go off and be the kind of final line of uh, attack against the Fire Nation. And then from there you go into the kind of Zuko field trip kind of arc type thing where you get um, first him joining up with the group, which is a really strong moment. And I kind of like that they kept it so late uh, because him, uh, he adds so much to the group because he's been the enemy of these people so long. So you really don't know how he interacts kind of friendly with all of these characters. So Aang is kind of, kind of uh, when he actually joins the group, you know, like Aang is kind of just like, friendly, happy, and so they, they're kind of like opposites, but they are actually cl close friends. Um, Zuko and Sokka are closer in age, um, both being boys and stuff like that, um, so they can relate more to the whole like girl issues that they're having and stuff like that. And then Katara and Zuko is an interesting one, because they do have a kind of connection just through their kind of not knowing what, Katara having lost her mother, and then Zuko not knowing either way if his mother's alive or dead, just knowing that he doesn't have her at this point in time. So. There's some nice uh, connections going on here, and then Toph constantly tries to get a connection with Zuko, but like it, 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 she never has a good field trip with him, which is interesting. But um, yeah, um, and then you go into episodes like uh, obviously the Firebending Masters again, bringing up history towards the end of the book. I really like this whole idea of the ancient Sun Warriors being the people, first people to learn from the dragons how to firebend and how Ang and Zuko. Both struggling with firebending, Zuko, because he's on the good side now, what actually drives his firebending. And then Aang just dealing with uh, that he's afraid of firebending a little bit. Important episode, uh, what this allows is, is, because Zuko's new to the group, it allows you to get those moments where he interacts with all the characters. Plus, plots progressed, you know, Aang learns firebending in the episode, um, and their friendship is dealt with. And, the subtle setup into Korra with potentially like Zuko picking up the uh, ancient Sun Warrior artifact, which we assume it eventually hatches into his dragon Druk, and all of this other stuff. It's really important. And then Iroh, the mention of Iroh in that episode that he didn't kill dragons. He purposefully lied about that to keep Ran and Shah's uh, location safe. Then you go into the Boiling Rock, which I think is a really good two-parter. It works on its own as just this kind of like prison break movie type thing you know you have some interesting minor characters there with chit sang the whole the whole cooler concept uh it's, it's a really interesting feel to those two episodes just a kind of prison break episodes and suki returns to the group hakoda comes back and you just have all this amazing stuff happening i think they're really strong episodes and then you, you even have those episodes deal with uh may and zuko's relationship a bit you have the awesome uh, scenes towards the end with them um, May and Tylee betraying Azula and really heavily starting Azula on her path to kind of mental breakdown that for the first time ever her uh, kind of control through fear isn't working. These people who she thought were her friends have just betrayed her and stuff like that. So super important. Then um, next up, uh, the, the, the Southern Raiders. Um, I would probably go as far to say that this is probably the best episode of Avatar. Um, w w I w on the podcast of a couple of months ago, we did top 10 Avatar The Last Airbender episodes. And between the four of us on the podcast, this episode basically came out on top. Like, we each did our own individual lists, 
and this one got the most, the highest votes. Like, I think it got, like, two first places and, like, two second places. That's how highly rated this episode was. And sure, it's not, like, uh, as epic as, say, you know, the finales and stuff like that, but we... I think the, the conclusion we came to is that, like, the finale works as a foursome of episodes, but this works as a single episode, because it is so emotional, because it is... Zuko helping Katara to hunt down the per person who killed uh, her mother. Because Zuko is obviously Fire Nation, he has some insight into what actually happened. Um, and it's about the healing, the healing of that friendship. It's about revenge. And on the outset, you know, Zuko is like actively trying to help Katara to kill someone. And I love just that scene where Aang comes to her before she leaves and just goes, like, um, you know, revenge is like this two-headed uh, snake, you know, while you take someone down, you're also taking yourself down. Uh, that advice kind of permeates throughout the whole episode. And he also tells her to forgive. And you think you think towards the end that that's going to happen. Because you, you, you know Katara's maybe not going to do this. But when actually she comes into contact with Yon Ra and you find out how kind of helpless, pitiful he is, it's so interesting to see how she, how she kind of handles him. In that, she wants to kill him. She really does. But Ang's advice does come through in that she doesn't want to bring herself down to that level to kill someone who's at her mercy, helpless in front of her, like he did to her mother. Um, and. Just how she eventually kind of decides not to do it because she sees how pitiful he is. That, you know, this is his life right now. You know, why would I just kill him and stuff like that? And how, you know, she takes some of Ang's advice, but she realizes that she probably will never forgive this guy ever because of what he did. Um, and so half of Ang's advice is correct, half of it's not. And I just like how that comes out. It's just such an emotional journey. Um, with these characters and how the forgiveness part does come back but what what this journey has led her to do is to forgive Zuko for what happened at the end of book two and that's just really well done I, I think it's just really exceptionally well done and how that leaves you with the cliffhanger going into the finale in the last last few episodes with okay so you're talking about uh, forgiveness and not wanting to kill people what are you going to do when you face my father and it's just like whoa Aang doesn't like to kill people because he's airbender and now as the avatar he kind of is in a situation where he almost has to kill Ozai when the battle comes around and you're just kind of like why didn't I think of this before like this is a big issue and it just leaves Aang speechless and it's just something that he deals with as you go on and you know Ember Island Players is obviously the next episode I think it's actually perfectly placed and um, I'm one who really likes this episode because, you know, the, the way the episode works is obviously that um, they've gone from basically hiding out, so they're not in any immediate danger at the end of like uh, 316, and they, you know, it makes sense that they can just go to this place, have one final nice moment together, go into this play of their journey, and it ends up being just probably the best recap episode I've ever seen of anything, just because it's all new animation. It's recapping the show through a play on screen and the way they use the whole acting stuff and that they don't have benders, they just have these effect parts uh, on stage for the um, stuff and how they just kind of make fun of things. It's a very funny episode, but it also, because our actual characters are watching the play, you get their reactions to these moments and so you get emotional moments from this. Um, like about how the the play portrays it more as if Zutara was the relationship actually happening, and then Z Aang gets a bit jealous, and that kind of prompts him to actually admit how he feels to Katara, but Katara doesn't want to because admit it to Aang because they're in the middle of a war. It's not the time for that sort of thing. And Zuko reacts hard to seeing all the betrayals of Iro and Toph kind of helps him a bit to get through that um which is kind of her field trip with uh, Zuko which is good and um it just ends up being a really strong episode you know Sokka loves all the jokes that the he gives his actor to uh, do during the whole thing and even just the way the play portrays the end of the show that they kind of like it's the future moment and it's just this is what happens if you guys lose 
you're going to die basically and it's just a really dark way to end the episode and just like and just come out of it going like eh, that wasn't a great movie uh. and then you go to the finale and what can i say about the finale like the core finale it's so well done it's action-packed all the characters are, are up to something it's a great end to the series um, and that's all that's always a hard thing to do with any of these series that are really good up until the finale how do you end it well it doesn't resolve everything it, it doesn't and I'll, I'll talk about that more in the next video where I discuss the avatar as a whole it doesn't resolve everything and even you could probably criticize the show for actually doing the Zuko's mom tease as one of the final scenes of the show because at that point in time they didn't have any plans to actually do anything with it so it's a really weird cliffhanger to end the show with but overall it's excellent like the, the way that the fight comes to an end some people say oh deus ex machina but mm, I don't, not really it makes sense that the lion turtle comes back and grant Aang this certain power um, and just amazing battle amazing music amazing just character stuff going on that it's a great conclusion to the series and just you know that's how you end the series you know the uh, Katara and Anne coming together as a couple at last clear setup you know the reason uh, I, I have much more I, li I like the Katang romance scene as the final scene of Avatar compared to having some issues with the Korra Sami scene at the end of uh, Korra is because there's so much setup for Katara and Aang as a couple going into the final episode of Avatar while with uh, Korra and Asami is you have a, you have like one scene really and you're like okay Korra Asami's kind of a thing are they actually going to do it and then they actually happens and you're just like whoa did I miss something here you guys um, it, it's a bit like that while with Katara and Aang it's just like well finally um, but yeah that, that that's basically been the video I I really like this book and um, I can definitely understand why some people maybe would say book two is the better book overall because it has more plot and stuff like that but for me as I said book two I think is lacking a little bit in terms of really epic episodes which this book has in spades towards the end like the Susan's Comet all of it uh, Southern Raiders Boiling Rock all of those episodes the, the invasion towards the end are amazing and uh, for me that puts it above book two like it it's a kind of way I'd maybe phrase it it's just like Book three is as good as it is because of the work done beforehand by book one and two. That without the character introductions from book one, without the plot introduced in book two, this book wouldn't be as good as it is. Th those two books set up book three to be as strong as it can be, and I think it does that really well. So, book three of Avatar, excellent the overall, I'd say. Um, it's got one episode more than the other two seasons. Um, and while I'd say it contains the weakest episode of the show, it contains so many of the strongest episodes of the show that that, that criticism doesn't really have an isn't really like a, too heavy for me. But um, yeah, and then the format. I understand the format of this book may not be the favorite of a lot of people, but for me, it's perfect. That I love this the the format of this book with the exploring the Fire Nation and kind of realizing who the true villain is um, that the the people of the Fire Nation is just as innocent as the people of the other nations and then amazing run of episodes to end it off but yeah that's been my review of uh, Avatar The Last Airbender book 3 fire next week we do Avatar as a whole so we'll discuss the whole series and uh, pluses and minuses and then we'll get into the chorus so uh, yeah that's been the video thanks for watching and bye